In this demonstration, we're going to look at data loss prevention policies. The purpose of a data loss prevention policy is to identify confidential sensitive information in email. What we can then do is we can either block that email, allow that email to be sent, or notify a user that is sensitive information and allow the user to decide whether or not to send that information. What we have is we have manage policy tips. And what we can do with the manage policy tips button here is we can use policy tips to notify users about policy matches. So we'll put some sort of meaningful message in there to allow the users to be notified there is sensitive information. The other thing we can do here as well is we can manage document fingerprints. And a document fingerprint is a date loss prevention feature that converts a standard form into sensitive information type, which can then be used to define transport rules and date loss prevention policies. So an example may be that we'll create a document fingerprint based on a blank patent template. And then what we'll do is we'll create a policy that will detect and block all outgoing patent templates with sensitive content filled in. Optionally, what we could do as well is we could also create policy tips to notify the senders that they may be sending in sensitive information, as we've already mentioned, and that the sender should verify the recipients are qualified to receive that data. And this process works with any text-based form using your organisation. Some additional examples of forms that you can upload may include things like government forms, employee information forms for human resources department, or we could create our own custom forms created specifically for the organisation. What we're going to do in the case of this demonstration is we're going to create a basic policy. So what we'll do here is we'll click on the plus and within this plus we can create a new DLP policy from a template. We can import a policy or we can create our own custom DLP policy. So we'll create our own. Right, we need to give this thing a name. So what we're going to do here is we're going to call this one block IP addresses. What we're also going to do here is I'm not going to bother with the description. I will enable this policy and we will also enforce this policy. So we're not going to test it. We are going to enforce it. And then what we'll do is we'll select save. Once we've created the policy, we need to edit the policy because we need to put some rules in place. So we'll select our edit button. On the general page, it's just the information we've already filled in. Let's just go to the rules button. And what we'll do here is we'll create a new rule. So what we can do here is we can create a new rule. We can notify a sender when sensitive information is sent outside the organization. We can block messages with sensitive information. We can block messages with sensitive information unless the sender overrides the block. And we can block messages with sensitive information unless the sender overrides with some sort of business justification. We're actually going to block messages with sensitive information. That'll then bring us into a little wizard that we need to fill in. So. Up at the top here, sent the scope outside the organization. So apply this rule if recipient is located. I actually want to modify this to say inside the organization. But if I click on the drop down, I can also do for an external partner organization or in an internal non partner organization. So we will go for inside the organization and select OK. Then and the message contains sensitive information. So now we'll select our sensitive information types. Select our plus button. As you can see, we've all got some templates from Microsoft. And what we want here is we want IP address. We'll add that in, we'll select OK. Then what we'll do is we'll select OK again. Then what we need to do at this point here is we need to do the following. We're not gonna add any additional conditions. So do the following. So we will generate an incident report and it is sent to, and then we need to select somebody it's sent to. But if we click on the drop down, you can see that we've got a few things that we can do within here. So for example, forward the message for approval first, redirect the message to a certain user, block the message, add recipients, apply disclaimer, modify the message properties, modify the message security, prepend the subject of the message with, generate an incident report, reason this one's grayed out, sort of what we've already got and then notify the recipient with a message but we are going to go for select one so we'll generate an incident report and what we'll do here is recipient will be at this point here administrator with content and then we'll go for custom content and within the custom content what we also want that notification message is sender recipients we'll go with subject and we'll also go as well for matching content We'll then select OK, and then what we'll do is we can notify the sender with a policy tip. And again, 
we've got some conditions that we can put in place very similar to the ones we've just looked at here but we are actually going to block the message so we'll block the message and what we'll also do here as well is we'll just put some NDR that the user will receive because we are going to block their message so we'll want to give them something meaningful now I'm seeing here this message has been blocked due to IT policy based on and then if I scroll this right along to the end IP address I'll select OK I'm not going to bother adding any additions I'm not going to bother adding any exceptions we will audit this rule and we'll audit that with high severity level we will enforce it we will activate it on this certain date at this certain time we won't stop processing any more rules and we won't defer the message if the rule processing doesn't complete match the sender address in the message so we'll do that based off the header but we could also include envelope or we could have header or envelope so both then what we we'll do is we'll just put in here IT policy is what we we'll put in place and then we'll select save and that's the end of this demonstration of creating a data loss prevention policy thank you